I'm Connor, and I'm joined by my good friend Dan. Howdy. And today is a very special day, guys. As it's always. It's the second annual Andy Nominations Day. Yes. Very exciting that we are able to uh, kind of start off this award season again with yeah. the Andes. Um, and as you know, the Oscars have been delayed. But us, ever the purists, yeah. <laughs> um, decided that we wanted for the Andes to stick to the January to December Andy's schedule. Yes. So all these movies uh, were released in some form in 2020, and uh, we will be going th- down the line of all, or at least up the line from our 10 categories that we have. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll just get into it. Yeah. So I can. Well, an important thing you brought up, Dan, mm. is we're sticking to a traditional um, qualification time frame. And that means some movies you talked about uh, that we enjoyed are not eligible for Andy's this year. Yes. It's the big standouts for me, at least, in terms of Andy's consideration that we're not able to qualify because I've not seen them yet yep. or they are just ultimate at the time period is Minari, uh, Nomadland, Malcolm Marie, and Judas and the Black Messiah. Those, Yeah, those pretty much all the four last big releases um, that are actually yes. being seen by the public as we speak. And while I would consider each of those movies Andy worthy, mm-hmm. they didn't come out at the right time, and thus they're not eligible. So um, I guess I'll start off with best production, and then you'll go up to VFX, and we'll just keep going like that. Sounds good. Okay. So um, our first category, uh, uh, as always, is the it, the film and created category for best production, which is kind of like – it's a lot of stuff really rolled into one, yeah, don't you think? Um, production design, costumes, and makeup in the same category. Pretty much, yeah. Um, so the nominees this year are Emma, uh, Birds of Prey, True History of the Kelly Gang, Underwater, and Tenet. And I find it really interesting because we literally talked about Birds of Prey – in season two, like did, like yeah. the week after we did the Andes last year. And coincidentally, it was the Oscar winner episode. Is it was, about Birds yeah. Of Prey. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn mm-hmm. is the full title of that motion picture. Not to be confused with the foreign film from a few years ago that was called Birds of Prey. Yes. But I'm pretty happy with all picks I am, here. Yeah. Uh, I think these five definitely deserve best production. I yes, think they have yeah. these amazing, like the production design of Emma is great. Uh, along with Birds of Prey, the set design yeah, and set all design, of that, and hair and makeup. makeup. Yeah. Um, the same for Tenet. Obviously, I think uh, the production design is always uh, from a Christopher Nolan movie, working with his crew and Emma Thomas producing yes. is like always pretty magical. And then underwater with the locations there, and also the design mm-hmm. of the suits and everything. Yeah. And Very then and then kind of the rawness of true history. Okay. Next category is best visual effects, Ooh. which is Tenet, Underwater, The Invisible Man, Spree. And relic. Ooh, interesting picks there. Very good slate from us. No, um, yeah, it's a great. It's a great We're so slate. So good at our jobs. We oh boy, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Tenet obviously for uh, it's interesting to say Tenet for visual effects, but like the amount of practical effects that go into a Nolan film, yeah. even one that I find like has some flaws, like Tenet. I mean, nowhere near my favorite of his work. I still think the production, like the visual effects still stand out this year since we did just have less movies to pick from this year exactly so big budget so visual effects which is why i'm worried 2021 might be a bit lopsided obviously there will be some lulls but we might get all the 2020 bangers that we were supposed to get and i i might have a difficult time deciding you know no vfx is going to be a difficult category next year i'm sure yeah just the um, backload of stuff that's already like you know blockbuster visual effects heavy yeah Uh, in terms of stuff in this category I mean, especially the top three from here, things I'm, I've been very impressed by. Yeah, I mean, uh, underwater, obviously. Like, I think what, what I liked is that it did something that was Aquaman esque, very close to the like showing the realism of being at the bottom of the ocean, exactly. except not like Aquaman. It didn't no. feel like a copy paste, which I really appreciated. Yeah, and its own distinct personality and the way they approach the design of the creatures and everything. Invisible Man, visual effects. Yeah. I, what what they else? They made is a man there to invisible. Say? They made a man invisible and it was really cool. Yeah. Um Spree was <laughs> Spree and Relic, I think are two of the two of the more interesting picks that I yeah. wanted to uh, at least uh, recognize in this category again, kind of a sparse year for visual effects in 2020. But Spree was really interesting how it used a lot of different. I mean, if anything, I would almost want to give Spree stuff something for editing. 
yeah. you know, yeah. in in the way they showed it visually, but it came off as visual effects, yeah. you know. And, and there's very slight CGI enhancements in the movie as well. Exactly. Yeah. And then Relic, uh, which, Connor, you actually have not seen yet. I have yet, not seen Relic. But I was able to get this nomination in. Thank you. Um, uh, for those of you who have seen Relic, a uh, New Zealand horror thriller film, a uh, really interesting watch. Uh, not one of my favorites of the year, but for visual effects, especially in the third act when really things fall on that final night, it is uh, very interesting and impressive. Um, I watched it in the drive-in, so it was kind of dark, but from what I remember and what I saw, it, it is really just an interesting expression of visual effects and how that's used uh, generously. Um, but also sparingly, which is cool. Um, I'm not going to say too much because Connor hasn't seen it. No spoilers. Uh, but, yeah, I guess you want to move on? Yeah. So Best Cinematography, this is your read. My read. For Best Cinematography, the nominees are <laughs> um, Promising Young Woman, uh, Benjamin Kraken, Tenet, Hoyt Van Hoytma, Bad Education, Lyle Vincent, True History of the Kelly Gang, Ari Wegner, and The Owners, David Ungaro. Um, so, Connor, thoughts? Very good slate of stuff this year. And I just watched The Owners last night, and it's a very visually like gorgeous movie. In terms of years, this year was just a very, very strong year for cinematography, especially um, if you know me, you know the two standouts for me in cinematography this year, Rip Education, True History. Mm-hmm. And it's two incredibly gorgeous movies, and I'm so glad they're represented here. Yeah, I, I think... When I look at this list, I see just nothing but interesting. Like, obviously for me, uh, going back to Tenet, um, Hoyt Van Hoytma, who has been working with Christopher Nolan for a while, has just continued to, uh, to come up with creative and beautiful shots for his mm. films. Uh, Promising Young Woman was uh, shot uh, beautifully. I think it was, it was very sharp. Uh, and harsh and very soft and almost pillowy at all the right moments. Yeah. Um, bad Education kind of really felt so raw. Uh, at yeah. least, like, there's so much realism to it, which wouldn't make you think, like, oh, cinematography, that wasn't that, like, impressive because it felt more, like, real and down to earth. But yeah. I think capturing that is what makes it magical. Yeah, just gorgeous and, film photography as yeah. well. And then true history of the Kelly gang. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, which, yeah. um... I won't say spoilers here for those of you who haven't seen it, but the end where it's uh, the scene just lit by candlelight yeah, completely. is insane. It's insane. I, I mean, what you have to do to achieve that is, is yeah. beyond me. And also owners, not to forget owners. I think that has some really cool uh, cinematographical choices. It's cinematographical. <laughs> yeah, so we talked about it uh, on the car today. They have a very purposeful choice in the third act that I feel like earns it this place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And obviously we'll talk about these uh, in more in depth when we hit the winner's list. Exactly. But um, moving on, I guess, Connor, for you, best score. Best score. We have Tenet by Ludwig Göransson, Soul by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, The Invisible Man by Benjamin Walfish, Truce Through the Kelly Gang by Jed Krizel. Black Bear, Julia Carmazzi, and Brian Scarry. Hmm. So, That's very good slate of things. Very good. Like sl- I, I know we're going to always say, like, oh, the very, very good slate, slate is always. But no, it is. You for, know, for we, it we really like all of these. 2020 being known as the year without movies. There was still incredible work that was released. Yeah. And it's just, it's. I'm glad we're able to, like, celebrate these projects and yeah, the scores. Absolutely. I think for me, at the end of the day, I really do appreciate the nomination episode a bit more than the winner's episode yeah. because it's kind of the same for the Oscars. Like when they release, when the Oscars release the nomination list, they're not like teasing it. They're showing you these, in our opinion, all the five best performance, all five favorite performances or works, yeah. movies of the year. One of them's a winner, but four of them are strong nominees in our eyes. And it's yeah. the same thing for us, where we're like, we want to represent these five. Because yeah. it's hard to choose at the end of the day. It's a wholesome thing where they, it's like, these are the five like pieces of work that are really connected with us in each of these categories. And while, yes, we have to choose a winner, obviously, each of these movies is a winner for being represented on this list to us. Yeah. Like the movies and um, things that are very important to us as part of these movies. Like when I think score, I think Tenet and Soul and Invisible Man this year. I'm not a big score person. I usually just like literally just, I don't notice it. Yeah. But those movies, like I really connected with the score and I felt the score like dramatically helped the experience of the movie. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, they all have the same kind of theme. They're all like kind of electronic. 
a little weird. And it's just like, yeah. my, like but. I think it also might be a fact that um, a lot of the scores might have been um, produced in 2020 when they didn't have the access to a full orchestra. room of orchestra yeah. people. So they had, excuse me, they had to um, scale down yeah. and do something a bit more intimate and personal. Which I think worked for all these. So yeah. moving on. Yeah. It's your turn. Best supporting M- actress. Me. Okay. Here we go. Um, last category before the break. We have best supporting actress. Oh, some great names here, folks. One you're definitely going to recognize. Um, we got Geraldine Viswanathan for Bad Education. Tony Collette. I'm thinking of ending things. Uh, Anna Dalmas for The Night Clerk. Margot Martindale for Blow the Man Down. And... For a repeat year, we got Thomason McKenzie for True History of the Kelly Gang. Thomason, congratulations. I know you are a weekly listener, yes. devoted fan of the show. Mm-hmm. Congrats no. on two knobs. She joins Brad Pitt in the exclusive club of two-time Andy nominees. That's not easy. That's not easy, not easy. to do because this is the second ever yeah. Andy's. Yes. <laughs> um, the funny thing is, Dan, if you recall last Andy's episode mm-hmm. – I make a joke that she cannot be here to accept her award because she's promoting Tracy the Kelly Gang at Sundance. Oh, and then her dog got attacked. And then like, sadly her dog yeah. was attacked, oh, yes. God, yeah. I remember so she that. Was, she was doing a lot of stuff that week. Yeah. So she couldn't make it to accept her Andy last year, but I'm glad um, it goes full circle. And the movie she's promoting is now the reason she'll be here at the Andes again. Yeah, which is really exciting. She mm-hmm. might not take home the cheaply printed certificate, <laughs> but, like, she she will uh, we, be represented we, at yeah, the ceremony. Yeah, absolutely. We want to represent these yeah. five amazing performances from these women and be like, thank you for dropping some great performances. Because, yeah. I mean, aside from Thompson McKenzie, Mongo Martindale in one of my favorite roles from yeah. her, a bit more of a lead role, yeah. if anything, for her, for Blow the Man Down. Yeah. Um, Anna DeAlmas from The Night Clerk, uh, one of my favorite performances from her as well. That was a, a nomination I recommended. Uh, Tony Collette, I'm thinking of ending things. Uh, Tony Collette does it again. Yeah, <laughs> um, national treasure Tony Collette. Yes, um, international treasure. International treasure, that's she, true. She's, she's not she's from Aust- here. She's Australian. Um, and then Geraldine Viswanathan, uh, I think, who's had a, a uh, an upturn in yeah. – being noticed, especially a after very bad short but very successful career as, so of, far, as of yet, which is cool. Uh, yeah. Excited to see where she goes. So I guess that's all five. Yeah, that's all of five. The first Party categories. Zombies. Join us after the break for the next five. We got best supporting actor, best actress, best actor, best director, and best picture. We cannot wait. And yeah, we'll see you guys in a minute. Running late to class but still need that morning caffeine or hot breakfast to start your day out right? Download the Bite app by Sodexo and place your custom order for fast, easy pickup at Zyme. Open 8.30 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Mondays through Fridays. Okay, guys, welcome back to the second annual Andy nominations. Woo! So we're going to dive straight into Best Supporting Actor. We have Pete Davidson for Big Time Adolescence, mm. Michael Dorman, The Invisible Man, Nicholas Holt, True History of the Kelly Gang, Glenn Turman, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and Leslie Odom Jr., One Night in Miami. Dang, these are, these are some it's good a, picks. Yeah. No, these categories going up here are incredibly stacked. Yeah, at this point, guys, we're only hitting the top of the top. I know we already yeah. have, but we found another top on top of yeah. the top. No. As <laughs> always, the acting categories are just incredibly stacked, sporting actress included. Yeah. Which um, um it was this category which was uh, the source of a lot of contention between us. Indeed. Because if I recall, when we made the Andes, when we made the nominations list, we only had Pete in common. Pete Davidson, Big Time Adolescence, was the only one because we, we we do all our kind of ideas for noms separately and then we come together and kind of just merge the lists. And yes. Pete Davidson was the only one we had in common. Yes. Which that does not mean me he's away. going to win though. No, I'm we don't know. That. We're going to see. Yes. Um, um, here's the thing. But I, while we had, a, we had a screaming match, and I called you a psychopath multiple times during did. the nomination progress. And sometimes I am, but sometimes, I'll, here, I'll sometimes own I up am to too. it. <laughs> but no, incredible slate of nominees. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen any of these movies yet, go and do it. Uh, um, it's the same thing if you recall last year, Dan. In lead actor, it was a thing where it's like Shia gives performance of the year. And then uh, Robert Pattinson and Lighthouse came along. I was like, he is performance of the year. Mm-hmm. And then Adam Driver and Marriage again. Like, That's the performance of the and year. And they just kept yeah. coming I down the line. I had that with Best Supporting Actor. Really? Where it was like, when I first saw Pete in Big Time Adolescence, I was like, this 
is I don't know he was capable of this. It's nuts. Oh and, yeah, absolutely. Oh, same, same, yeah. same. Yeah. No, incredible performance. And that, that's something a lot of categories is like I'm not gonna obviously tell you who replaced who and who, and I, I still Pete obviously might still win it. He just is incredible his yeah. work there. Same thing with Michael Dorman. We were very impressed with him in Invisible yeah. Man. The, the, all five these yeah. fellas all, all incredible in for the nominees. running. Um, well, I, one thing I do want to say is like I we say Michael Dorman for the Invisible Man, uh, but at the end of the day, I think. We all trying to represent the concept of the Invisible Man, but I think Michael Dorman is the most facial actor yeah. that we see because we couldn't, in good conscience, give it to the legitimate Invisible Man. Yeah, um, Oliver <laughs> Jackson Cohen, I believe, is that guy. Yeah. Name. Uh, so Michael Dorman, I think, is a really great representation yeah. of that, and also he just drops a good performance as like the brother of the. We Invisible were both Man. like just very impressed by him in the yeah. theater. That's like probably the f- person we came out talking about the most. Actually, was Michael Dorman leaving yeah. the movie. Yeah. Um, Nicholas Holt as well. Yeah, really, I, really fun to see him in that movie. Yeah, uh, he's, just, he's someone I fought for to get on this nomination list. Yes, I love him in True History. I'm happy he's here. Uh, we got Glenn Turman, which is someone I uh, yeah uh, really uh, Who knocked fighted Bo for. Him off his peak. Sorry, Bo. Uh, but Glenn Turman from Ma Rainey's Back Bottom, my favorite. Uh, performance out of uh, the foursome in the jazz band. So out of the form, Glenn Turman, my favorite. Uh, really great performance. And also character arc uh, at the end of the day. And then Leslie Odom Jr. Um, yes. Dropping a fantastic Amazing performance. performance. Uh, One Night Miami actually ended up being my second favorite movie of 2020, which was really cool uh, that I liked it that much. Um, amazing movie. Please see it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Here's the, it is on Amazon Prime. Uh, Regina King, we don't really talk about the Oscar here because it doesn't really matter. But yeah. Regina <laughs> King is probably going to get an Academy Award nomination for her future debut directing, which is incredible. That's, yeah. And here's the she I, deserves it. Incredibly well directed movie. Absolutely. Obviously, uh, the movie is partially about uh, Muhammad Ali when mm-hmm. he still cashes clay. Yeah. And boxing is incredibly hard to do. For your first time feature, having boxing scenes that good out of the bat, the first scene being a boxing scene, and I'm blown away. You're doing a really good job. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, so, I guess moving on to Best Actress. So, the nominees for Best Actress this year are Allison Janney, uh, Bad Education, Carrie Mulligan, Promising Young Woman, Viola Davis for uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, got uh, Kristen Milioti for Palm Springs, and Julia Garner for The Assistant. So, um, I'm going to say it, Dan. I'm going to be brave. Oh, really solid he? slate of nominees. You know, if we're really going out on a limb, I have to agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, here's the, it's another thing where it's like all these women just give like masterful performances. Yeah. And I think for um, Kristen Ayati and Julia Garner, it's like hopefully this like is their thing to boost them officially out into the scene. Yes. Obviously, Julia Garner, she's on Ozark. She's won two Emmys in a row. She's obviously not hurting for praise. Yes. But it's like there's she, also she's incredible a, actress. I'm not sure uh, this is maybe a more – might not be on your radar, Connor, but Everything Beautiful is Far Away. Do you know that one? I do not know that. Uh, it's starring Julia Garner. I would totally recommend it. I watched it this summer, and that was actually my introduction to Julia Garner because I, I didn't catch this one until last month. Um, it was actually my first movie to, of watching in 2021. Uh, but The Assistant, a, a great follow-up performance um, yeah. because Everything Beautiful is Far Away is a very kind of like scaled-back sci-fi drama. Oh, interesting. But, yeah. Um, Speaking of uh, sci-fi dramas, Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Incredibly fun Kristen movie. Kristen Milioti. is great in that. Um, Obviously, she's someone I've been impressed with for years now. Yeah. If you have seen the second season of Fargo, she's incredible. And also, I mean, you might know her from her somewhat small role in Wolf of Wall Street. I think these are two actresses, like Kristen Milioti and Julia Garner, that like I want to see this. I do want these two movies to be the movies that push them yeah, forward hopefully. in their careers. You know, Because like... I see Kristen Milioti in a role like Wolf of Wall Street. What year is that? 2013. 2013, early, like early teens, right around How I Met yeah. Your Mother, actually. It was right before I started high school, I believe, so it is 2013. And, yeah, and, it, and it's just, it is, it's, for a movie that big, in comparison, she has a small role. Yeah. And over the years, she ends up, like, continuing to drop these quality performances, yeah. and then you see her, she gets Palm Springs. Yeah. Small roles, but very big impressions. Exactly. Always. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I think the th- three of the more 
very established actresses kind of make up the rest of this list yeah. with Allison Janney, who has just continued to Seemed blow to all minds. Um, Speaking of multiple Emmy winner, yeah, we've, Allison Janney. we've been uh, watching West Wing, and yes, it's been we very have. fun to see her. Uh, Carrie Mulligan, Promising Young Woman. Mm-hmm. I have not seen her in a role this big since Drive, I think. Yeah. Or at least maybe Great Gatsby, whichever one came first. No. Uh, and it's it's nice to yeah. see that she's back. I really haven't seen her making waves like well, this. Like Kristen, she just had like she's had a couple of lead performances where it's like already on she's not doing much, but she's giving huge impressions. Mm-hmm. A big one for me is uh, Wildlife, which is Paul Dano's directorial debut that came out in twenty sixteen, I believe. Oh. 2016, 2017. Yeah. Um she's just incredible in that movie. Awesome. And then obviously Viola Davis. Yes, the legend Viola Davis. <laughs> the, the, the little legend um, uh, in the middle of this list with Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Uh, and I think every time I'm watching a Viola Davis performance, I'm like, okay, this character, like sometimes she gets a character that is like a bit underwritten, a bit not impressive, a bit like more of like the side show, not the protagonist, but yeah. like the side show exactly. of this film if it was in any other person's hands. But I feel like... I don't know, uh, Viola Davis is able to bring, like, a certain depth to yeah. characters, a certain sympathy to characters. She constantly elevates. Yeah, it is what gives the character yeah. this, she, this, she makes Ma Rainey a person. It. Yeah, she makes Ma Rainey a person. And not yeah. and beyond that, a compelling person. Exactly. Uh, so that's always so nice. Um, Ready to move on to Best Actor, Dan? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Best Actor, we have Hugh Jackman for Bad Education, Paul Bettany for Uncle Frank, Riz Ahmed for Sound of Metal. Chadwick Boseman for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and Kingsley Benadire for One Night in Miami. Woo! In- incredibly stacked category. Another stack. And the fun thing about this one, Dan, if you recall, in contrast to Best Supporting Actor... Of only had, having one in common. We had four in common. Four, which was very, very nice. And the fun thing is, you just hadn't seen One Night in Miami yet. Mm-hmm. And then once you do, it's like, yeah, Kingsley Benadire should definitely be here. So we basically... We basically had five in common. Which has... Almost never, never happened. happened. Yeah. And it was very nice to have that happen. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, again, strong performances from everybody. It's it's hard to really sum up. And obviously we're going to talk more about all of these in the, in yeah. the winner's episode. But Hugh Jackman, um, really nice to see him stepping off like the, the more I'm big gonna, budget I'm gonna say it. pedestal. Career best performance from Jackman. Really? It is, this best. is his best performance. Yeah, it might be, honestly. It's it's, it's crazy how good, good he is in Bad Education. Um, and also, to that same extent, Paul Bettany yeah. stepping back from MCU and still being able yeah. to drop these really and that impactful is the surprise performances. here for people. I think, yeah, I don't think people are going to be like, oh. They're going to be like, like, Uncle Frank? I can understand One Night Miami, Ma Rainey, Sound of Metal, Bad Education, but no. Uncle Frank, what's that movie? You know, like. Because like, if. Uh, Education was eligible for the Oscars. I think Jackman would have a stance there that he would be talked about. Yeah. Paul Benny is on no one's radar except for the most important award show, the Andes. Yeah. So. Well, I think it just kind of goes to show that the Andes have always been the most adventurous. Yeah, we have our ear to the jarring. ground. We do. Yeah. You know, I think, do we just care about we movies We just care more? about movies more than the Academy ever will. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, taking names. Um <laughs> Riz Ahmed, obviously. Yeah. That, Someone for me, so far, career performance. Yeah. That blew me Someone away. Someone who's always impressed. Yes. Um, Chadwick Boseman. God. Obviously gone way too soon. God, gone so way too in, soon. An incredible talent. And um, obviously, but he's like, the frontrunner for the Oscars and, right now. Yeah, and leaving and leaving us be. with a performance like this. Yeah. I mean, I think what's so amazing is that, like, when you look at artists and their final statements before they, you know, pass away, they move on. Yeah. Um. Some people, like, you can kind of tell there's, like, something. There's, like, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, you can look at something like Bowie where there's such, like, a yeah, this Lazarus. is it. He has Black Stall. I'm out. But you have Chadwick Boseman Which... who knew he had limited time on this earth. And he yeah. just continued full steam ahead with his performances. Yeah. He didn't really stop and be like, okay, here's my last one. Bam. He didn't drop it like that. No. He just kept working until he couldn't anymore. No. Incredible, incredible talent. We got what I we could got. do a whole episode talking about how great Chadwick Boseman is. <laughs> so I'll move on to... Welcome um, to Boseman and. <laughs> Boseman and. <laughs> uh, and obviously Kingsley ben Kingsley ben Another... Someone who is still Man. a relatively young career, but is constantly impressing me. Yeah. Incredible, incredible talent. And, and he brings we're talking, such... this is Malcolm X. It's Malcolm X. It's Malcolm X in One Night Miami. Um, 
if you know anything about the movie, Malcolm X yeah. is in it yes. with Muhammad Ali and Sam Cook, and Sam Cook, and um, Jim Brown, and Jim Brown. Um, but yeah, um, moving on to best director. This one's mine. Um, another, no surprise here, folks. Another five great picks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got Lee Winnell for The Invisible Man, Justin Curzel for True History of the Kelly Gang. Charlie Kaufman for I'm Thinking of Ending Things, Max Winkler for Jungle Land, and Emerald Fennell for A Promising Young Woman. Yeah, it's an incredible slate of directors this it year is. as well. Um, obviously, again, when there's yeah. incredible, incredible movies, there's incredible people behind them. Yeah, not much to say <laughs> behind these. Obviously, I think uh, we've seen uh, Lee Winnell, at least in the, the Blumhouse circle and just the whole thriller film circle, moving yeah. up in the world, finally getting a chance like this to be like, this This was the big one. Exactly. Not, we'll probably get more big ones. But this he's was... doing Wolfman with Gosling, which yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. It's going no, to be so far, Lee Winnell is just knocking in the park because his two movies are both four and a halfs for me. Wow. So he's yeah. a very good director in my eyes. What's his other one? Uh, Upgrade. Upgrade, right, right. Uh, and then, right. Justin, Justin Cazell. Cazell, True History. Yeah, the, incredibly you, directed movie. We'll we'll talk about that more yeah, eventually. We uh, Charlie Kaufman, I'm thinking of any things. I think uh, if if you know Charlie Kaufman, uh, what Sign of Doke, New York, the writer of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah, um, yeah that definitely is in his. Most, he's definitely in his pocket here. Yeah, that's the most controversial choice. But it's a great pocket. It's a fun. Weird fun, pocket. Cool pocket. <laughs> um, this is the most controversial choice on this list. Not even Max Winkler? No, here's the thing. Max Winkler, people are going to be like, what are you talking about? But here they're going to be like, what are you talking about? You know what you I said, mean? You said those the same way. <laughs> no, I did not. Here's you know, like, what's funny is that you said them the same way. You just changed. You were just, you just like lowered your head looking at That's me. That's true. <laughs> but people are going to be like, who's Max Winkler? That's what they're going to ask. Yeah. They're going to say, why the heck is Kaufman here? Yeah. yeah. They don't know Winkler. They're going to know Kaufman, Kaufman and be confused. And I don't know. I, yeah. Here's the thing. Everyone hates I'm thinking of anything. I think it's a very good movie. I liked it quite a bit. Yeah. It was. It's the whole mother thing. Everyone hates it. It's a good movie. I yeah. like it. Hey, film and stamp of approval. We're not afraid punk. to be controversial here. No. No. We, um, we, we and stand then, honestly, out on the ledge. Emerald Fennell. This being, I believe, this is her first feature. That's right. Yep. Incredible first feature. Um, if you don't know Emerald Fennell, she's um, an actress. Mm-hmm. And a uh, writer and director. She's worked a lot in British TV. Mm-hmm. She was a showrunner of uh, Killing Eve in season two, which I think the second season of Killing Eve might be even better than the first. Yeah. Um, incredible, incredible stuff. And she's also in The Crown. I need to watch The Crown yeah. finally. And I think just to leave Best Director off on a thing, and, and I don't want this to like take up the whole sphere of these Andes, but it's hard for me to step away from the fact that if it had come out a month earlier, you would be seeing... Chloe Zhao and Francis McDormand on this list. And yes. it feels it's I'm I'm kind of sad no, that they're not I, but I will, next year. Next year. Yeah, no, if 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 it met the eligibility time frame, Chloe Zhao would be on this list for And sure. obviously we're talking Nomad Land. Yes. Francis McDormand, Chloe Zhao. Um, yeah. Um man. here's a, we'll we'll have a little section about Nomad Land. Very good movie. Uh very great movie. Yeah, and inc- it's a five star for me. Yes. So I very much like that motion picture. Yes. But yeah, I guess moving on to the final category. So this is for Best Picture, the second annual Andy Awards. We have the eight nominees, Promising Young Woman, Bad Education, Sound of Metal, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, The Invisible Man, True History of the Kelly Gang, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, and One Night in Miami. Dang, Connor, that's a pretty good that's list. A pretty good slate. <laughs> uh, the surprises here, I'm sure, people is going to be um, Invisible Man and True History. Yeah, I think those are the two big surprises. Yeah, but um, no, yeah. just very good slate of movies. Um, I like all these movies a lot. And, yeah, uh, same. Yeah, that's why they're here because they're they're they are the eight best films of the year. Heck yeah! In terms of honorable mentions, what couldn't quite make it is I really tried to get Soul on this list, but it just didn't happen. Sadly. Yeah. I try to get something else, and I can't remember what now. Um, all right. Well, that about sums it up yeah. for the Andes. And then join us next week for a little um, – I'll say We can see what it is, right? Yeah. No, I already did yeah. the tree. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, next week, we have a very exciting installment of something a bit more racy, uh, a bit more exciting. Yeah. Hold on to your pantaloons. And then uh, two weeks from now – We'll have the second annual Andy Awards. Yes. Tune in. 
please. It's going to be a great yeah. time. Champagne, letters, and maybe some special surprises some special as guests. always. Would you like to plug anything, Connor? Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll do something different. I think I'll plug my letterbox this week. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, guys, when you hear one of the movies we've talked about today, whether we're going to talk about the future or the past or any time in between, Ooh. you can follow me on Letterboxd at Cranberry18. That is C-R-A-N-D, Berry18. Thanks for listening, guys. You'll hear us again next week. Bye.